So number one then, the first question in the 2022 Advanced Higher Mathematics and Mechanics. Four mark question, what does it say here? An object of mass eight kilograms is at rest on a smooth horizontal surface. So here it's here, we'll just put a wee block down so it doesn't roll away. That'll keep it at rest. And a horizontal force of 65, horizontal, 65 newtons is applied. Oh, it's only applied for a certain amount of time. 1.2 seconds. Calculate the speed of the object after this time. Well, you might just think force, mass, acceleration. Get the acceleration, and then from the acceleration, you can find the speed after 1.2 seconds, since it's starting at rest. In other words, use Newton's second law. Or you could use Newton's second law the way it was originally formulated, which was, first law said, a body will continue in its state of motion. In other words, it'll just continue its momentum unless operated on by an external force. The second law introduces that force and says, if a force acts on a body, it'll change its momentum proportionately. So that if you apply a force, then that will change the momentum over a given time. So the rate of change of momentum will be the rate of change of its momentum. Because if you just pop that over there, then you've got your dv by dt, f equals ma, you know, for a constant mass. Or you could do it the other way, take that across and use big changes instead of small changes. So F delta T, and M's going to be constant, will be M delta V or V2 minus V1. Impulse. Impulse equals the change in momentum. I'm just saying that you could use that instead because part B asks about impulse. So you may as well put down impulse. So here's the impulse. F delta T equals mv2 minus mv1 for a constant mass. Now, it's starting to rest, so that's zero. So what you've now got is the force 65 times 1.2 is going to be the mass, which is 8, and I've just put that down as v, because it's actually minus zero. So we've only got the one velocity. And I should also put down, this is the direction, but considering positive. Now, for working that out, there's actually a mark, but you don't actually need to work that out to use it in the rest of the equation because the rest of the equation would just say the velocity would be 65 times 1.2 upon 8. So I'll put that mark there maybe. And then pressing the buttons you get 9.75. Meters per second for the second mark. Now you could have done it the other way. You could have said F equals. F equals mdv by dt. F equals ma. Just going straight in with F equals ma. Get the acceleration, and from the acceleration and the time, you can get the final velocity. So you could have said that's the case. So just rearrange it. A equals F over m, 65 over 8, whatever. Then, well, obviously 8 and an eighth. And then having the acceleration, you could then say, well, the final velocity will be the initial velocity v equals u plus at, started at rest. That was, I'll just keep that the way it was, 65 upon 8, times the time, which is 1.2. And then that would be the correct answer. But that's exactly the same as that. So that just takes two stages instead of just the one stage here. Part B then, the object then hits a wall, well, here's a wall, hits a wall and rebounds. So it comes in, obviously at that speed that we just worked out, and rebounds, rebounds with no loss of energy. So whatever speed it was coming in at, it went off at the same speed. Calculate the magnitude of the impulse of the wall on the object. So the impulse is here. Notice the direction of it. This impulse is acting in that direction, whereas the original impulse was acting in that direction. Well, I think the first thing for the two marks would have to be, you have to state what the rebound speed was. So we had V1 was 9.75 metres per second, which means that V2, with no loss of energy, will be negative 9.75 metres per second. Just taking again the same direction as positive in the horizontal direction. And that is indeed worth a mark. 
Now just be careful with the signs when you put the same business down here. So that means that impulse equals the change in momentum, but I've got a name for it this time, I'm going to call it I, except it's going this way. So it's negative of whatever the amount is, because it just wants the amount of I, the impulse of the wall on it. Negative I is going to be MV2 minus MV1. So I'll just flip those signs. So the actual I itself, the impulse you're looking for, will be flip all the signs over. That'll be M times, but this time it'll be V1 minus V2. So I is going to be 8 times V1. That was the 9.75 minus the negative 9.75. So that's just two lots of 9.75. Multiplying that out should give you the impulse. Multiplying it out gives you 156. The impulse of the wall on the object is 156 newton seconds. It didn't seem to require units for the answer here, it just says 156. Best to put them in.